Welcome everybody. We're going to talk about Pixie.js today. I'm going to start off with a basic tutorial. All right. So we're going to do first things first. I'm going to start we're going to make a new folder here on my desktop called Pixie. And we'll go inside there and we'll make a new folder in here for JS and one more for images. All right. So first things first, we're going to grab it. So we'll open a browser here and we'll go to pixiejs.com and we're gonna go to downloads now if you're not familiar with pixie.js it basically it is a graphics engine to do some pretty cool graphics work and you can use it to make some simple games with it now it's not really quite a game engine per se but that's uh it has all the things you need to kind of get started to do so so we're gonna go to downloads and there are a couple ways of doing it um, you can use a cdn so if you scroll all the way down here you can just use this and be done with it uh, and it'll go out to the internet to this cloudflare and grab the file for you but my personal preference is to actually download it and keep it uh, local for myself so that's just my preference you can do either way and how you do that is you go and look for the how to build part look for pre-built releases click on that and once you can hear uh, you can grab the production build and this is the minified file right here so I will right click on this and save link as and I will let's see I'm already in my location here and I'll just basically save it as pixie.min.js as default okay so that's it so now we're done that with that that's all we need the only thing else we'll need is uh, we will create a uh, simple graphic. So we'll go to here, we'll go, we'll go to paint, and basically you can resize that. Resize it's already, but you can resize a, a, a simple 32 by 32 uh, pixel uh, image. Um, and hit OK, and then I'm going to use the, the flood fill paint bucket here, and I'll make like a, I'll use a dark yellow, and just click in here, and I'll just do a save as, and save it in my uh, let's see desktop pixie and my images folder I'll just call this uh, player.png all right so we're done with paint so now we can now right click in here now I'm using Visual Studio Code you can use brackets if you want to but I prefer Visual Studio Code okay so now with Visual Studio Code loaded and we'll see that uh, my directory environment here shows that I have my JS folder with my pixie library and then the image I created earlier Okay, so now first things first is we'll create a document. So we'll create index. Oh, wrong place. Make sure it doesn't. Make sure you don't actually create it in the JS folder. So I'll click on here. So it's actually outside. Index.html. So now the one thing I'm using here is a, is a live server. All right, and it's actually very important because Pixie.js won't work properly if it's running. If you like double click the HTML file to load it, um, usually browsers have security restrictions that will cause things to not work right. So it's best to use a live server which emulates a web server environment. Um, so to, to make things work like it would in the real world, once you publish it to a web server someplace. Uh, so to do or do that, it is in the extensions. You just type in live server here, find it, install it. Once it's installed, you have to restart the Visual Studio Code. Once you, it's restarted, uh, and you're working in a, in a folder, not a file, you can then use the go, go live. So if I were to basically start now with a basic HTML5 stub using an Emmet code, HTML colon five, I have a little stub available. And if I if I were to save this and then click on the go live, a browser will pop up and my page will appear. And so what's nice about the live server is that once I save anything, the page reloads and I can continue working and just see the changes I've made immediately, which is very handy. So first things first, let's take a look at the developer tool. We'll bring this up and you'll see that, you know, here it is. And, if I, and Pixie actually creates a, a variable called Pixie. If I do capital, all caps Pixie, right now it gives me nothing because I haven't loaded the library up. And so uh, first things first then is we we'll go back here and we will now add this, close that. So we'll create a script tag and we'll use the script SRC, grab JS slash pixie min .js. And just by this, hitting save, I go back out to here and the developer tools, I'd say do the same pixie again. Now I get a big JSON object full of stuff that shows that the pixie library is available for me to use now. All right, so now we will use uh, the environment to you know, set up a basic setups for us to continue working on actually creating something. So we'll create a script tag up here. All right, and we'll create a variable, variable I'll use called app. And I'm going to use an onload event. I'll use this function. 
And so you don't actually have to do it this way. I mean, you could put the script tag below down here. Um, and I personally like to do it this way, just uh, with the download event. I'm pretty, I'm guaranteed that once the page is done, uh, you know, it'll trigger this event and it'll, it'll initialize and do what I want it to do. So uh, it's personal preference. You, uh, I'd like to do it this way. You don't have to, uh, but I do recommend it. So first things first, once the page uh, is finished loading, we'll set it up. So app equals new pixie dot application. All right. And inside here, it accepts a JSON object with parameters. And we'll start off with a width of 800, a height of 600, and we'll give it a background color. And let's say, we'll just use, and use hex values, and we'll just go with a kind of a light gray color in the background, just like that. Now, once that's done, we have to put it somewhere. So it's, you know, we initialize it, it's, it's in the variable, but it's not gonna be visible until we do something and put it somewhere into our body. And so you could put it into an element, but I'm gonna throw it in the body for simplicity. So I'll do a document.body.appendchild, and we'll put the app.view in here. Now it's important, you gotta put the view, you can't put the, uh, the app itself in. So you're putting the view into the body. So if we save this, I go back to here, and let's see. Oh, I spelled that wrong. It's uh, window, window.onload. So save that. And now we see that we have our gray kind of canvas area object. Look in the elements section here. You'll see that there is a canvas object created now. And in the console, you'll see it says pixiejs520 is available. So it shows that it's initialized. And so now we're ready to continue on and add sprites and do more um, you know, more things in here to you know, kind of make a game.